Welcome back to the Modern Mindfulness Podcast. Today I have Steph Strauss. Hey, Steph. Hey. Hey, hey. I am very excited to have Steph on the show today. And before we get into the extra juicy stuff, I will share a little bit about Steph. And I will also share up front that Steph's one of these people that we met on the internet, pretty sure. And I always just find it so awesome and refreshing to then meet the person. I mean, we're on Zoom, but it feels like a little more in person, quote unquote. And yeah, it's just that reminder of like, we're all just like right there, like human, human to human, even in something like the techie world that we live a lot of our time in. So first things first, Steph is a Chicago-based trauma-informed embodied movement, yoga, and mindfulness meditation facilitator and creator of the RSI method. RSI is a practice of putting the body first so you can learn to release stored emotions from your body through embodied movement, vocal activation, and breath work. You'll be guided through yoga, dance, somatic movement, strength training, breath practices, and vocal releases, all through glimpses of structure, st- structured freedom, and complete freedom. And the RSI method is a practice you can only do right as long as you keep your body free from self-harm. When you continue this RSI practice, you also begin to connect to your own innate wisdom and power to trust and embrace all the mystery, mess, and magic your life has to offer. Mm, Sounds so inviting and so empowering and all the things. And we'll talk more about RSI in the conversation, but hearing that very minimal bio about who you are, Steph. Is there anything that you'd like to add in, in terms of a bio, a little bit more about you, where you're at right now in your life as we head into the rest of our, our talk today? Ah, first I <laughs> to take a deep breath. So, yes. and just say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be featured, to talk to you, to connect. And like you said, how we Uh, found each other on the internet and the magic of this place um, and what we can create from this place. And uh, yes, just this power of connection of humans from across the globe. And in your case, we're uh, West Coast to the Midwest of the US. (laughs) Um, And I guess what uh, I would add to that is that I forever, forever consider myself a student. And uh, this is just the path that I want to continue to to learn and be of service to myself. And when I am learning for myself, that um, it's not just a benefit to me, it's a benefit to all beings everywhere. Um, And that is just an important piece of everything that I do to to be an inspiration to all beings everywhere with no exception, to really um, walk the talk and be aware of my thoughts, my speech, my actions and anything and everything I do. And that life is my practice. Mm. Life is my practice. So let's suck that in for a second. Yes. And knowing what I know about most yoga teachers, mindfulness, meditation teachers, it all starts somewhere. And especially seeing what you've now collaborated all these things within this RSI method, where did it all begin? And did it start in fitness? Did it start in yoga? Like how far back do we go with even just like this professional offering that you've now like, you know, combined and created this glorious blend? Hmm. Thank you. Um, Yes, so I came into this world of uh, mindfulness and meditation and yoga and somatic work by way of yoga in 2012. And this was a time in my life where um, everything kind of hit the fan and I was working in restaurants. I was the GM of a... uh, restaurant in the Chicagoland suburbs that was very successful. We brought the city to the suburbs for all the young parents that, you know, recently moved. And I gave everything to this, this restaurant and uh, everything that I, I, I pretty much gave up my world, my life to focus on this restaurant. My intention was to, to create, to give, to serve. 
which is interesting because that's what I do now. Looking back, that was just kind of a, a moment that just kind of <laughs> dinged in my mind. Um, and um, about a year after we, I was working there, uh, the owner sat me down and I'm giving you the Cliff Notes version. The owner sat me down and offered me a demotion. And I literally cried, like ugly cried <laughs> three days straight because I gave my world to this. This, this was my life. This was, it felt like it was my purpose and, and we were successful. But in hindsight, looking back, you know, I was not happy. I was a mess. I was, you know, yes, being of service, but like not tending to myself at all and just giving, 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 giving. And so during this time, a friend of mine was like, hey, Steph, why don't you come take a yoga class with me? And I was like, <laughs> I don't work out. You know, I don't do that. <laughs> And, you know, working in restaurants, I used to smoke cigarettes. I, we, you know, I had like a totally different lifestyle staying up late at night and, you know, going out after work because the last thing you could do was just relax after you're working in a restaurant, you know, everything just like go, go, go all at the same time. And so I ended up going and it was that practice where something just like sparked in me. It was a feeling sense. It's not logical. I can't explain it, but I was just like a full body. Yes, there's something here. And so, um, shortly after that, I ended up doing a 200 hour yoga teacher training. And, um, I did not start teaching afterwards because of so much self-doubt and just that time in my life where I just lost confidence in myself you know here I was demoted from a job that I thought I was good at like and just questioning everything so I didn't I didn't start teaching at that time but there was like this also this inner knowing of of that like this was something I'm gonna come back to and I didn't know when but I knew that this was like yeah this was like a yes I need to do this again so uh four years go by I'm gonna again, fast forward, four years go by of me practicing yoga. And then I ended up doing another teacher training, more of like a, a fitness training. It was yoga sculpt. So yoga with weights, incorporating, you know, everything that I had been practicing and learning um, with more of like a fitness and music driven practice. And uh, this time I was ready. This time I was ready. And uh, I started teaching in I believe it was September of 2016. So it took me four years to, to build that trust in myself, to build that courage to be able to um, facilitate, you know? And a part of that process to, to develop that courage in myself was setting intentions. And intentions are something that, you know, as a yoga teacher myself and as you as a yoga teacher and going to yoga classes, that's something a lot of facilitators offer. They offer an intention or they, you know, invite you to bring something to the forefront of mind that you're working on. And for whatever reason, that spoke to me. And it wasn't until I got to my fourth intention that I had like another kind of aha moment, um, like a light bulb click off, but being like, okay, like, I'm sort of like making these things happen by, by living this intentional, purposeful life and, and you know, inviting in these, these intentions back into my world and everything that I do. And it wasn't until later that I did my meditation tr training that I was like, okay, yeah, I'm literally changing neural pathways in my brain. I'm rewiring the way I think, the way I act, the way I show up and who I am by repetition. And that is just fascinating to me. And so that brought me to uh, my fifth intention, which was that I wanted to create and live, uh, or excuse me, I wanted to uh, find a career that made me feel the most alive. And I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew that it had to do with fitness, with yoga, with mindfulness, with meditation, with health, with wellness. Um, so from my practices of working with intentions, I knew that if I, I, you know, I can just kind of throw it out into the universe and, and have this sense of trust that 
the universe hears me, but also, you know, not expecting it to just fall into my lap and to be open to listen to like the messages and the signs that are here for me to take action towards that step. Um, so what ended up happening at that time was it, it just kind of opened my eyes to be more curious about opportunities. And uh, at that time, um, a meditation teacher training kind of showed up. It was actually on Facebook, a, a sponsored Facebook post. and. Um, this post was like, oh, interesting. Like, I'm really curious about this. And it's a beautiful studio that's in Chicago. It's uh, very close to my home. I could walk there. And I had been there before taking meditation classes. And it's like, when you walk into this studio, you just feel like, like you're exactly where you're supposed to be. So I was like, okay, yes, yes, yes. I'm curious. I want to do this. So I signed up. And at the same time I signed up for that training, um, there was uh, a Reiki level one attunement training that also kind of came into my radar. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like, this is a weekend, it's affordable. Like, yeah, I'm curious. Again, the universe in my, from my experience is always, you know, is always giving us signs and messages. And it's up to us to be open, to listen, to pay attention. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to sign up for this. And this was right before my training started with the meditation, um, uh, the meditation training. And during the meditation, before the meditation training started, they invited us to read a book. And the book was called Into the Magic Shop. And I had never, uh, growing up, been a book reader. I always went for the shortcuts, uh, you know, getting cliff notes. And I don't think, to be honest, I don't think I ever fully completely read a book before this book. And this book, I could not put down. I could not put down. I was like, okay, Steph, there's something here. And just being with that without having to figure it out or understand and just like, yes, just soaking it in. And so then I do my Reiki level one attunement for the that weekend. And, you know, the, the Reiki teacher was inviting us to do practices and practices. And at the same time, there was something that was pulling me more towards this book and the practices that, that it was inviting in there that I was like, okay. So I used some discernment. I was like, you know what? You know, Reiki is always going to be here. There's something here with the meditation training. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to focus my attention on that. So I did. And this training um, turned out to be just one of the most profound, I don't even have words for it, but it, it just like opened my world and my eyes to just like what makes me feel the most alive. And, and it was all of the books that they were shared with us. Like I could not, I'm like, who is this person? I am not this person. And it was so fascinating to find something that like literally makes my eyes widen and like wakes me up when I'm exhausted. So um, during this teacher training, uh, the, the owner is a, is a woman who is incredible, just a force um, of of a woman that just fully supports her team and her work and everything she does. And this, this company, this, uh, her company is called Chill, which still exists today. And I actually teach for today. Um, she, they were launching a mobile app and this app, um, she invited us to be the beta testers of this app. And, uh, and so you sent an email for us to do this and I immediately responded to this email just saying, thank you. Um, her name's Laura. I said, Laura, thank you. Thank you for creating chill, opening chill. Thank you for creating this teacher training. It was their first time doing it. Thank you for this community that you have given me. I feel like I found my people and just thank you. And if there's anything I can ever do for you to continue to support you, ask me. Mm -hmm. And in true Laura fashion, she responds in less than, I think it was 20 minutes. And she says, uh, thank you so much for this email. 
Um, it came at exactly the right time. I would love to get to know you better. Do you have time to grab a cup of coffee or, or something of the sort? And I was like, me? <laughs> you know, there's 26 other people in this training. And, and I'm like, me? Like, clearly she can't do this with everybody. So we set something up. And uh, before I had met with her, I was working with a, a coach at the time. And she knew that intentions meant a lot to me. So we came up with a few intentions to go to this meeting. And the, the intentions were connection, openness, and opportunity. And we, I remember going to this meeting and like being so nervous. And when I get nervous and excited, like I start sweating, sweating in my armpits and my heart races, but it's like this, this excitement. Like I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. So yes, there's fear there, but there's also this knowing, right? Cause I, I know this feeling that yes, my, my mind is saying like, Steph, what the fuck are you doing? But, but there's this like inner knowing, like, yes, this is what you need. This is exactly where you need to be. So I go and meet her. We have a coffee together and we have an incredible conversation. Um, she is a, a lady of presence and she makes you feel like you're seen. We got to know each other. I got to hear, you know, why she started this company and also um, she got to hear about my background, which is in marketing and branding and also, you know, teaching yoga as a facilitator. And, um, and then it gets to be like, almost, I'm like, we've been here for a while. Like, how is this gonna, you know, thinking like, my, my, of my uh, intentions, openness to be open and curious as to how I can be helpful to her community and connection to have this real, true, genuine connection with her. And then opportunity to leave this meeting with an opportunity to work more closely with chill. So I'm feeling really good. And then, you know, it's, it's getting to a point where she, she even says, she's like, you know, I gotta, I gotta go to a lunch soon. And like, in my mind, I'm like, Oh my God, like, how is this going to end an opportunity? Like, blah, like, I'm like, okay, Steph, get out of your head and be here, be here. And then she asks me this question. She says, she's like, so have you been incorporating, you know, any of your meditation teacher training into your, um, into your yoga classes? Cause she knew that I taught yoga and I said, yes. And I spoke to that just a little bit. And then she said, oh, she's like, well, have you ever considered, you know, teaching for chill? And like <laughs> inside, I was like, just like going absolutely insane. But I was like, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> And then I, I spoke up, I said, you know, I would love to teach for chill. I was like, but I, I have a full-time job and I already teach two yoga classes right now. And that's a lot, but I said, but I'd be willing to leave my full-time job to work for you. And she's like, okay, well, what's your number? And, um, <laughs> you know, let me get back to you and uh, see what happens. And that was a Thursday. She got back to me on a Monday. Um, I was already having a conversation with one of their team members and I was onboarded. And the job that I created was to do behind the scenes marketing and teaching for uh, yoga and meditation. So combining my worlds together <laughs> in the industry that just makes me feel alive. And uh, this happened mm. in January of 2020. And I think we all know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and, mm. and so um, I got my dream job. I got my freaking dream job. And I was also making a little bit more money than I was before. So that story that I told myself, mm. you know, that I can't be a yoga teacher and, and, you know, pay my bills and pay my mortgage, that that's just a story. There's other people that make this happen. And I, I can be one of those people. So mm. fast forward to, uh, you know, the pandemic. So we were working in an office and then I was also teaching for them uh, part-time yoga and meditation. And then um, we started working from home and everything went online. And uh, I think it was a few months in, uh, Laura had to have a challenging conversation with me, telling me that 
you know, she can no longer pay me what she's paying me. And she gave me options of what to do, but there was something in my being that was like, no, I want to continue what I'm doing, working for you full time with this pay that's okay, that I know that this is temporary and I know we can have a conversation again. And it's just a full body yes for me. Um, so of course she was so grateful. And then, you know, fast forward to a few more months later and she has another conversation with me and I can't even imagine what those conversations were like because I wasn't the only one. And uh, again, uh, another pay cut. And this one, you know, really was a tough one. But I said, yes, like this is what, this is what my heart, my body, it's not logical, no, but this is what I need to do. And of course, she's so grateful. And then September of 2020, she says, Steph, I can't pay you anymore. So, um, you know, this was terrifying because, okay, this is my dream job, right? And now it's being taken away. And uh, one of my uh, teachers, I like to call her my teacher from reading her book, Pema Chodron, she, um, I was reminded of what she said when she, uh, was studying as a student. And, you know, there's things that happen in your meditation practice that, yes, seem magical and you make things happen just like I did. Yes, but also um, that it's no big deal. Mm. So she, you know, told one of her teachers at the time that this happened and she was so excited about it. And her teacher was like, yeah, well, it's no big deal. And those three words really kind of made me realize, yes, it's no big deal that I can't get stuck on this idea, this notion that this is the end all be all, that I'm still in this practice of trusting that everything is unfolding for my highest good and for the good of others, and that something else is unfolding, that I'm still creating an uh manifesting a life, a career that makes me feel the most alive. And this was the kind of entry point into uh, creating the RSI method. That gave me the time and the space because unemployment, I was getting paid from the government and finally being able to invest in myself and my curiosities, those things that light me up and to, uh, dive further into practices and work with teachers and learn different modalities because everything went online. And <clears throat> a big part of the inspiration for the RSI method was of um, the class. Have you heard of the class? Yeah, yeah. The class. So I was introduced to it because of, you know, Instagram and Facebook. They know us better than you know us. <laughs> and so it came up in my feed and I was like, oh, this is curious. And so I started practicing, um, I think, sh uh, shortly after September of 2020. And I still pay for a membership. And there is something about these practices of, of like, giving you structure, but also like a little bit of freedom to kind of like see like, oh, hey, like what does your body want to do? That like, again, that was just like a light bulb moment. And I had so much more, um, I don't know, insights and curiosities that were coming through and creativity that I was accessing just through my body. And, and it's not logical and I can't explain it. But there was just something there like, I want to know more. I need to know more, 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 more. And uh, I actually tried to uh, do a teacher training with, with the class, but um, they only do it in New York and in LA, which makes good sense. They're very, very strict with that. And so then I started uh, being inspired by um Sa Di Simone have you heard of Sa? Uh uh Sa Di Simone so he created um it's called he calls it the Sa method where um he uses um a mantra he uses dance he uses uh meditation he uses affirmations um in a in a kind of journey he guides you on and 
there was something there that just like really got me curious. And this was before he even like was doing teacher trainings, but I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to do more of this. And then, and then I started working with his sister, Moon D. Simone, who I speak to so very often um, in my, on my, uh, in my work, because I think it's so important to honor our teachers and the teachers before them, because none of this is anything I ever made up. And it comes from thousands and thousands and thousands of years of uh, practice and lineage and, and, and wisdom that you know, I learned through these teachers um, to that which, uh, and again, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's not logical where like there is no option for me to kind of create or excuse me, do a teacher training. So, and, and that I just started implementing these things in the way that I taught. And it was being well received. So again, that just kind of like put a light bulb up in my head, like this is curious and, and just going with that and keep in continuing to offer these kind of somatic practices that um, are with the body, letting the body lead instead of the mind and structure and, and giving people an opportunity to, uh, or offering an opportunity to be able to access this part of them. So taking them on a journey. Because for me, I know that when I first did yoga, I was like, I, you got to tell me what to do because, you know, I giving me freedom, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to look weird, you know? So it comes with practice and, and with, with invitations that you can only do this right. You know, as long as you keep your body free from self-harm and it's, it's a practice, you know, and it's a coming back to, and it's a, it's a learning. It's an, it's a, it's a practice. And, um, so what ended up, what ended up making me realize like, okay, like I need to do this was my teacher Moon. She, and I, I'm, I'm saying that like, none of this was created by myself, like this like my community and my support and that I have is I would not have been able to do this alone, let alone believe that I could create a method, you know, that story in my mind, that story that those old stories tell me that I'm not a good teacher. I'm such an imposter. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And these stories appear every day. You know, they don't go away. They're very much present, but but it's, it's this, this, this knowing that, that those stories aren't true. And it took me almost four decades to, to realize that, you know? Um, and, and I don't, I don't, my, my whole journey towards this, this, this method and creating this method, I feel like is exactly how I needed to be able to create this. Like it wouldn't have just been birthed from the beginning. I needed to have these steps on this journey to, be able to believe in myself. And, and I say, believe in myself. It was because of moon that was like, Steph, you need to do this. Mm. And hearing that from her was like, what? Like, you're telling me I need to do it. <laughs> I'm telling me that I can't do it. And so that's, that's where it came from. And I will say it took me a year to launch because of so much self-doubt and my self-doubt led to so much pro procrastination. And then finally, I was like, you know, what happened was um, I had a reel that went viral and I was like, holy crap, like I have all these people coming to my page. Like I need to, I need to like think of some call to action to, to, to give them something like somewhere to go. So I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, you know, first of all, RSI Life Method is going to be <laughs> on July 16th, 2021. And I was like, what am I doing? But there was like, the, again, this knowing like, this is what I have to do. Like, they're all here. So um, I did it and it happened. And the first RSI method was a total mess because my audio, <laughs> my, my music playlist didn't, didn't work. And it's a very music driven practice. Um, but it just gave me the opportunity to, to teach from that place, to facilitate from that place. And what a gift that was because people that came on the first day are still coming back today. <laughs> so I was like, okay, Steph, like that says something. 
Mm. And my oh my, it's been it's been a journey. I still am figuring it out. I, I don't know what's happening with this method. I'm I'm doing my best to to release any expectations and to have this this that all I want to do is be of service and be of benefit to people, to, to show people that this method has entirely transformed my life. And if it can do this for me, I really believe it can do this for anybody. And, and it, it's, and yes, like it's challenging. It's triggering. It's, it, that's all part of the practice. It's a self-study and it's learning to, to study yourself from a lens of love and compassion mm. and that we're, we're capable of doing that. Mm. And I just talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it all needed to be said. I mean, what a beautiful story of so many things. I jotted down so many awesome reminders and nuggets. I don't even know where to start in my notes, but it just like trust stands out in all of this. And even in trusting in this moment that everything you just shared, like you're, you're tapped in, you're tapped in, especially when you're here sharing the goodness of like, what sounds to me like following a life purpose and kind of surrendering to, I'm not a Jesus y person. And I'm a total Jesus person in the sense of like, yes. And like Jesus taking the wheel, you know, it's like, it just felt like in this, in this moment of so many, it's like trusting in something greater than oneself, you know, getting out of the mind, getting out of the ego and just kind of hands in the air, like trust. And so whether it was in this share just now, in all the moments you shared of this, like what is still just such a minimal example of all your life moments, but just that trust. And you've said several times of like, just trusting in yourself and trusting in those years of moving from the restaurant industry into this. And I, I can relate. I think so many can where it's, it's also I wrote down the Rolling Stones lyric of, you know, you can't always get what you want. You get what you need kind of thing. And it's just like, you get what you need and we can totally turn it away and say no and block ourselves off from what is universe or whatever, giving us those signs, those gifts, what, what we need isn't necessarily always pleasant either. And so what a, what a very thorough, just share and I wrote down a big music note here at the end. And I was like, I just want to applaud you for your music picks because I know through the years too, that's something that in your Instagram stories and all of that, it's like, you have such great music taste. And I'm sure that your RSI method classes are just like the best music. And just knowing that you have an ear for it and that making music a part and I can relate and like music so crucial to really rattling some things loose and feeling it and just the vibe of music body. Is there any more to the music story for you? Has music always been a tool or vehicle? Are you a music lover? Are you a musician yourself? Uh, music lover, 100%. Um, what's interesting about music, and this is something I've actually never shared. I've always, mm. when I was in my, I think it was my twenties, I was really into like house uh, music and, and I'm going to say Chicago house music because, uh, that, that music was birthed here and it's different than techno and it's different than drum and bass. And, um, and, and I remember that like people that were in my circle, they never liked my music and, uh, and how interesting that was to me, but there was something about like feeling like the, the beat and the bass in your body like that just makes you want to move and like without knowing what you look like or caring and like at that time yes I needed booze to be able to do that now I don't need anything <laughs> I let this body just be free but it's just so curious to kind of reflect back and just notice notice that part of me that that was there and that it, it's always been there and uh, and then creating playlists for um, my practices. And I did this with Yoga Sculpt too, because that was a very music driven practice. And there was something mm -hmm. always about like, like hitting the beat drop when something like big and explosive hap happens. And it's like, yes, like it just feels so good. And so, right, I see you nodding your head. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and that's why music, I think, is so important because it it creates this this I don't even know how to explain it. This like it just like 
mm, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to, to voice this, but it just elevates the experience. And anytime I, I share uh, a practice or um, my, my practices, I think it's so important to share my playlist because I can't do this work without these artists. And th this, this, I feel like that's so important to me because I know that, and I know from teaching a long time ago where I was very protective of my playlist. And mm -hmm. yes, it does take time to curate um, a class and a playlist, but but it's these artists that are that are these creative geniuses that really transform transform the way my practices can take you on a journey. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Totally relate. Who are you listening to right now? Like, do you have any, any top songs like today, this week that you're just in love with? That's so interesting. There's Putting nothing you on the spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Welcome that all the time. There's nothing that's uh, popping out uh, to me right now, but what I do do is, you know, I'm constantly listening to music and making playlists for future playlists mm -hmm. and listening to my playlist before I facilitate to, to, to have that feeling sense that it's, it's going to be, it's going to kind of match what I want to facilitate or, or whatever comes through um, in that practice. So there isn't anything specific, but I will say the, the music that I tend to listen to is, is more so that like, house dancey like it just like does something it makes me feel alive it makes me just want to move and be free mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll toss all the links in the show notes of all the RS, rsi links and there's probably some music links tucked in there too so yes and just sharing thank you for mentioning honoring the teachers and also also honoring the artists and i know through these last few years it's like you know spotify and this and how do they even you know, how, how do we support the artists? And I do think just sharing them and sharing the playlist and letting people find these artists and then they might go to a show or buy something, you know, it's like, so I do believe in that ripple effect too, of at least just airing, like, these are the people I love. These are the artists that I give credit to. These are the teachers. I mean, there's so much regurgitated information anymore. And so thank you for saying that. Cause I also just feel like in, in today's day and age of all this spiritual stuff too, it's like, if you know where you heard the thing, can you at least give a little, because otherwise I just think it loses some of the essence of what is actual handed down. So, so just wanted to like echo that too. And with your teachers and all of that. So hear, hear that and heard that. And, um, and on this music thing too, without going real deep into music, people can do their own research on the power of music through time and culture. And I do think there's some like primal thing and we're made of music, we're made of sound. And it's making me think of that, that quote of like, don't let your song die inside of you or something like that. And so I'm thinking of a couple of things right now. One is like that viral Instagram. I think you were like dancing around, right? Could you maybe share with us? Like what was going on in that? And slash, I know I've seen you shake your booty on Instagram. So what, what do you like to share if people haven't seen your account yet? And what's, what's the story behind just hit and record and dancing? Yes, thank you for asking. Yeah. Uh, so, so that video that went viral uh, was one I was uh, hosting one of our retreats that actually happened a year ago this weekend. Mm. Um, and it was um, just in, in the work that I do, I'm always, you know, filming myself or creating content and, and, and all with the intention to be an inspiration to all beings everywhere. I think that's really important in, 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 in thinking of you know, my intention behind what I'm sharing, what I'm showing. Is it going to be of benefit? Um, and this, I, my, my sister that uh, I was hosting with, um, we were just creating content and I was just dancing. <laughs> uh, doing so freely in front of the other women that were attending the retreat and and for me to show them that this is possible that you don't need alcohol or drugs in order to be this free and move your body mm -hmm. um so and that that has all come with practice with time um with being able to really uh 
understand and be in and respect and listen to this body, this house that I live in. And I will say it took me just about four decades to, to, to really love this thing completely and wholly. And, and that's always a practice because my conditioned mind, like, you know, the, the, the first thing I see when I look in the mirror are my flaws. Uh, what I don't like that I, I, you know, I'm getting a wrinkle or I look bloated or whatever it is. And then I, I notice that I'm doing that. And then it's, it's my practices that, you know, I get to choose how I orient my mind and I can say something really kind and loving to my body because this body is the house that I live in. And it's always been here to support me, whether I took care of it or not. You know, I, I spend so much time in my practices just saying, I'm sorry to my body for all those years I smoked cigarettes, my sweet, mm. sweet lungs, you know, and, and this ever changing body that continues to get bigger and take up more space and change, it's going to continue to change. And how can I learn to love this thing and take care of it and respect it? Mm. And the more that I do that, the more I don't know, possibility and creativity and trust and love I can mm. access within myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Snaps, all the love. Yes. Yes to everything <laughs> you just said. And I wrote down almost word for word the quote of you don't need alcohol or drugs to be this free. And yes. And I think, I mean, that can go in many different ways right now in my mind, but like in, in the day and age of even plant medicine, which I do support in the day and age of different things, but it's like, oh my gosh, I just believe in, in the sobriety that we each can access and all the gifts that like this life is such a freaking gift. And so anything that's clouding any of that, I don't know, like at some point it is like, can people get curious around what would it be like to just dance? Like no one's watching without booze in their system with that. And we're getting there. Like sobriety is like on the increase in like, even just that way. Right. Like there's so much of that happening, which is cool. It's part of this whole thing on the planet right now, uh, that I know we're witnessing, but I really just admire that quote. And because freedom and aliveness that you've said, these are some of my favorite words. They're so simple. And like, that's kind of the point of life, right. To live, to feel free, to feel alive. So yes to that. And the other part that I was, when I was like on this music thing a few minutes ago, it's like, the vocal piece, because I know that as I read in your bio at the beginning and a little bit about RSI, vocal activation you know, using voice. And then I know that I've also seen you like talk, talk gibberish perhaps. So <laughs> could we, and, and we'll definitely start to wind this up because I know we could talk forever, but I really do want to talk about voice. And I know in my personal journey, finding a way to express myself through voice has been huge and I didn't realize how much I was repressing my literal voice, but even more so like my deeper, deeper voice of truth and all of that. So could you share a little bit about like this vocal activation, maybe gibberish, like whatever's coming up as you hear me suggest these topics? <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, vocal releases and activation and weird sounds and gibberish are a huge part of what we practice in the RSI method. So I invite everyone to make weird sounds, to be able to hear the sound of their own voice, to say weird things and to not have to make sense of it. And it's such, like I said, it's a self-study. So it's a great opportunity to notice like, oh, like this is weird. Like I don't <laughs> feel comfortable, you know, like making a sound or doing gibberish. And okay, so that is a perfect perfect opportunity to notice, okay, where else do you not speak up and like to hear your own voice? And this area for me is like, is so much of my work. Uh, I feel, and I also feel that this is, this isn't just my own, this is ancestral, that I am so blocked here. Like, yes, it may not seem like it, right now that I'm being able to fully express, but the, the, the work of the RSI method in my practices um, has really helped me find my voice and be able to trust that, to trust my voice, to trust 
this inner knowing this, this, mm -hmm. that I don't need to look to Google to find the answer that I don't need to go to somebody else for the answer that it's all here within me. And it's, it's come from doing these practices and it's come from being courageous. It, it takes so much courage to, to walk in, to do one of these practices. Yes. And I will say that there's people that, you know, only come once and they don't come back or, you know, and that's fine. You know, that's totally fine. And what's, what's so important is it's so the work that, that we do, it's not easy. It's not easy because you're really going in and, and looking at yourself from a different perspective. And it's sometimes so hard to see all the things you do, all the things you say to yourself. My mind is a fucking asshole. What it tells me nonstop is awful. But would I ever talk that way to anybody else? No. So a big part of the method also is learning how to support yourself emotionally, that you can talk to yourself and treat yourself like you would somebody that you loved so much. And we do that. We do a lot of talking to ourselves. Not only do we make weird sounds and gibberish, we talk to ourselves. We tell ourselves things that we want to hear that nobody would tell us. Mm. So it's mm. also about just learning um, to tend to our needs when we need it. And that's not something we're taught. You know, yeah. it took me almost again, four decades to realize, okay, what are my needs? Like, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that language. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, it's just a, a never ending practice of, of, of coming into really the truth of who you are, not who, you know, society tells you to be, or your family tells you to be, that there's something within you that knows, and we get to access that part of us through the body by putting the body first and it's within all of us but it's up to us to to have that courage to do it and that willingness and it's a stretch and it's far out it's fucking weird the stuff i do is weird <laughs> we're all a little weird you know it's yes. like who isn't weird what's normal what's not weird these these words anymore, you know, but yes, yes. Thank you to all that. And even just time, like all of that, what you just like, that is voice, like voice isn't just vocal, but it's like truth. And the yogis out there are people that know about the throat chakra. And it's not just about, uh, using the voice voice. It's like expression of truth of self. So yes. And that can be in the way that you move and let yourself show up. Like that's all expression. So that's definitely what I see. And, and I have yet to join an RSI method session, so I will be doing that. And I'm curious, is there something we can do in like 10 seconds around the voice? Do you have a favorite like go-to or is there a warm up or just like a simple trick or is there anything you do in the car or something like if people are like, that's me, I need this voice help, like right here and now, can we do something? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, We'll, we'll just take three deep breaths and uh, the invitation will just to be a big sigh, a sound like a H A ha sound and to have it do your best to have it come from the gut. So we can do that together. So exhale out the air from your lungs. Take a nice slow inhale through the nose, filling all the way up. Big open mouth, exhale sound. Ha. Ah. Yes, expending all the air. We'll do it two more times. Inhale, filling up completely. Exhale, sound. Ah. Ah. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Ah. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just the simple stuff is so powerful. I know it doesn't have to be complex. Someone asked me yesterday, so you're talking 
there's this whole other thing, but uh, she's like <laughs> in your journey of like this, specific like getting to California and meet my partner on the stuff. She's like, any words, like, how would you describe it? Like, I just need to hear. And I was like, I thought for a half second, I'm like, easy, it can be easy. Mm. And knowing my pattern is to overcomplicate things, which I think a lot of people can relate to that. That's just kind of the complexity of life these days. And I was just like, ah, it's just easy. It can be easy. So even something like what we just did, it's like, and I admire breath work and I know it's powerful. And I think again, for those people that are in the, you know, breathwork yoga, all these things that are available right now, it can get confusing. It can be almost too complex. Like just that breathing and ah, a little vocal activation, getting that parasympathetic stimulated rest and digest, like all in just three deep breaths with a little sound. It can be easy. Ah, Thank you. Thank you. Well, like I said, I know we could keep going, but also be mindful of the time. And on that note, I do want to ask you the question that I aim to ask everyone on the show for years now, the podcast, Modern Mindfulness Podcast. It's around mindfulness, which is all sorts of things, including all the practices and simple awareness. But in your opinion, and maybe it's like just a simple like mic drop sort of statement, but why is modern mindfulness? Why is this important? Why are these tools important now today in our modern times? Mm, I love this question. I think it is so important because life goes by so fast and there is no guarantee that we will be here tomorrow. So with a consistent practice of mindfulness, it lets you be awake and aware of this life. All of those little ordinary moments that are magical that we would tend to miss had we been you know, ruminating about the past or future predicting that we don't get to see or pay attention to. And it's about just enjoying moment to moment as best you can. And of course, that's, that's, it sounds so simple, like we're saying these simple practices, but it is challenging. But the more you're able to be present with what you're doing while you're doing it, that to me is living. Mm. Hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. The mindful moments. I was thinking that last night too, is we have like the corner of the bed and I'm like, don't stub your toe. And how many times I just rush and I've stubbed my toe. It's like, even in just like, it seems so simple, right? But just know where your feet are when you're walking in the dark, <laughs> like, yes. you know, yeah. Yeah. The microcosm of my, my macro and micro, just the little examples of big life situations too. So Yes. Thank you for that. So you've mentioned RSI. Of course, I'll put it all in the, in the notes. People can find the immediate links, but what do you have going on right now? Where do you hang out the most? Where can people find you? Anything else to share in terms of what you have coming up? Yes. Thank you. Um, so as of right now, I am uh, in Chicago living here, uh, but things are up and changing and I'm on an exploration of trust right now, as I've shared with my journey of trust that I'm in a space of unknown and something's unfolding here. I'm in some sort of transition and uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to be ending up and I'm going to be doing lots of traveling uh, in the near future, which I am owning and honoring how blessed I am and privileged I am that I get to to do this uh, because I will be selling my home and that will free up some finances. Uh, And also understanding that not everybody has this right and that I do this, not just for me, but for all beings everywhere with no exception that um, I'm here to serve you and to to help us uh, manage this messy, mysterious and also magical life. Um, And I teach online right now, Saturdays and Wednesdays, Um, Saturdays, that's uh, 9 30 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. That's 7 30 a.m. for you. And I also teach Wednesday nights. That's 5 30 p.m. Chicago time. That's 3 30 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and currently figuring out what I'm creating next. I host retreats from time to time. Um, retreats have been put on pause because of my move and uh, creating courses. I don't have anything at the moment, 
but uh, RSI method is uh, what I show up to and teach weekly. So I'd be honored to practice with, with you, with anyone that's curious. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I will be there because this is all of what I'm about. It's anymore. It's more of just scheduling for me, but I've always loved your Instagram, even before the whole viral thing I remembered, and maybe it was the chill studio, but just like the blue. I mean, so people go check out her IG. I'll put it there in the show notes. Of course it's right there, but I mean, you've so many practices that people can explore with you just there too. And I just remember being in awe of just the, the way you presented everything. And it must've been the chill. Was that the chill studio with that blue? Yeah. And I remember writing you that like years ago, like, this was so cool. Like, where is this? And so it just very aesthetically, you know, pleasing. So lots of goodies just there as well, even though now it's all morphed into what RSI is, but I, I, I always love just kind of digging a little deep on people too, and just kind of watching that journey unfold of offerings. And it inspires me to keep letting my offerings expand and morph and not be so eek, just because I did this for five years, I need to keep doing that for five years. And so I love just kind of peeking at the past and there's always good, good nuggets in those sorts of things too. So all of that, everyone check out Steph's stuff, all these notes, I feel like we could like do a whole other episode because we barely <laughs> even skimmed the surface, but kind of full circle back to what I said at the beginning was meeting you online and the power of people and connection. And I know that you, you actually went to Europe, right. And like met people that you only met through virtual community. And, and we had a few little messages back and forth around just like people can hate on social media so much, but there's also, as with so much in life, there's a whole other side of the coin there. There's like beauty, there's power, there's like real relationship. Do you have any last words on that? Cause I know I, when my first reached out about having you on the show, I was like, I want to talk about this a little bit. Or I just think it's so cool. So I don't know. Any, any final thoughts? Yes, <laughs> yes. That experience. It's so even hard to put into words that I was in Europe for a little over a month. Uh, around the new year and uh, connected with people on Instagram that I, that invited me into their mm. home to stay in their home. <laughs> and I had never met them before in my life. And of course there's that feeling of like, Ooh, like what if this goes bad? Or, you know, like what if we don't get along? But I like meeting these women in real life and the experiences I got to share with them are experiences that I want just in my life every single day to be able to have such meaningful, honest, open, vulnerable conversations with humans that I met on Instagram and just to be seen and heard and to hear them was just, I have no words. It was magical and it exceeded my expectations. Every single person I met it, it was amazing. Amazing doesn't even do it justice. <laughs> like it was mm. just so powerful. And just also just touching on just like that feeling sense, that feeling sense, like, yeah, this is something I want to do. And no, it's not logical. Like, yes, I have that fear mind that tells me like, what if they're going to kill me or murder me? <laughs> like, is it safe? But it's that feeling sense. And when I go with that feeling sense, what unfolds on the other side is always bigger and better than I could possibly dream up and imagine. Mm. Yes. Yes. I was going to say like, it's, there's a difference between someone making a quick mental decision versus that embodied felt sense decision. And mm -hmm. usually the embodied felt sense decisions are where it's at truth, safety, even if there's a little hint of fear, it's all right. But yeah. So thanks for kind of clarifying that too. Cause yeah, sure. Everybody don't go like just staying in people's homes, people you meet on the internet, right? But it's like trusting and you have you had such a journey of self-trust and the cultivation of that for all those years. So it makes sense that come just a few months ago, you were able to really lean into like, I trust by now. I know that if I'm feeling this, yes, I know that this yes is a yes. And what a beautiful outcome of your personal journey of all of the mindfulness tools and practices and things. So thank you for sharing that little nugget of the travel that I just find so inspiring. So social media travel connection. Yeah. Oh, Steph, so fun to meet you in, in person here. And maybe we'll have an in-person Maybe you'll find your way out, out West again, and we'll hang out, but thank you so much for sharing everything you shared and everyone 
follow along with Steph on Instagram, check out the RSI method. And yeah, that's it for now. So take care, everyone. Thank you again, Steph. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you so very much. What a pleasure. You're welcome. Bye.